222 day, we will talk about XDC, R3 Corda, how it's actually important in this, and a bit about Trade Trust and Trade Finex, which are tokenizing real world assets in a trade finance industry worth trillions. And to make those points, we will be talking about examples of pilot programs involving XDC. And the big thing about where XDC can go is about international regulatory clarity. And that is coming into play, especially now in 2024. I think we've got to focus on enabling the market, create the environment in which the systems and the technologies and the industries can grow. Um, and so, yes, I think we have the tool. I think that's really important. One of the most exciting initiatives, I think, right now, anywhere in the trade environment is the Digital Standards in Initiative in Singapore. Because if that is successful, when it's successful, I should say, because um, it's a it's huge job, um, is it will start connecting up the digital platforms. Uh, it will start connecting up the government to business systems by simply um, fast tracking the standards that are already in the market so they become universal global standards and then creating standardized systems uh, where there aren't any in, in existence. Uh, and I go back to what I said at the beginning, if we imagine our consumer world, if you remember the world of Betamax and VHS videos or Apple and Microsoft kind of systems when they, none of them talk to each other, it was, it was horrendous, but it actually got solved pretty quickly in the grand scheme of things. And all we're talking about here is doing the same in the trade environment. So we know it's possible. Uh, we just got to keep focused on it, support it, um, and, and, and not try and pick off too more than we can chew at any one time. So, you know, I think it's really important we get some quick wins going on. You the guy who was talking is from the ICC. And he was talking about the e Electronic Trade Document Act in the UK, which is now passed and it is in effect. And we can see the ICC here on our XDC map, al along with the UN and the MLETR, the Model Law on Electronic Transferable Records, which is being adopted piece by piece by countries all over who have a heavy trade finance industry involvement. And I won't talk about those here because I have covered it a lot, but I will talk about EBL or the Electronic Bill of Lighting, which is one example of how XDC is tokenizing real world assets in the trade finance industry that is estimated to be worth about 30 trillion annually. Here is a shot from the ICC and it calls out 22 pilots happening right now. And it's in a lot of the Southeast Asian countries that do a lot of trade finance related business because of their proximity to the Pacific trading routes. And all of these entities and countries are involved in one way or another with XDC right now because of the EBL and trade trust. Here is an uh, extension of that. The XDC network is a hybrid chain primarily built for global trade and finance and has integrated with IMDA's Trade Trust and launched an initiative to enable the creation and financing of MLETR compliant digital trade documents. And here is an in-depth example of one uh, that includes Zoth, and it was in Latin America, which is not called out on here, but it's an example of even more connections with XDC. So in short, they achieved converting paper-based invoices into electronic tokenization and fractionalization of those and had capital provisioning against those for a 90-day period with the FXD, I can't say STs, it's right there on the screen. So participants in the pilot included Zoth, of course, which was 
acting as the financial institution and Web3 platform, TradeFinex, who was providing open source smart contracts and supply chain finance, and Ecliption, which was on the financial institution side that was providing custody of all of the tokenized assets. So what happened was that TradeFinex was the resource for the smart contracts to tokenize all of those real world assets with XDC and the capital came from FXD, which is a soft pegged USD, can't say STs again, but it's over collateralized with XDC, which means that because crypto is a riskier asset right now at this point in time, and it can have fluctuations in price, they have to have a larger fiat value of XDC compared to what the value of that tokenized asset is. And here is a, a write-up on the, that pilot. It introduces what we just covered, and ZA featured the potential of obtaining financing with tokenized real-world assets in its collateralized transactions. And because of that tokenization, they were able to secure funds for their clients, including FinTech offering factoring solutions out of Colombia and a lighting revenue based financing platform from Brazil. Pilot resulted in a cash flow of 100,000 FXD for each institutional client for a total of 200,000, which is just one more tiny example of how XDC is proving that it not only can work in the trade finance industry to make it much more quicker and efficient and open up vestment to entities and high net worth individuals who historically have not been able to invest in the extremely expensive kinds of assets in the trade finance industry. But it's a way that XDC is securing itself even more as the main trade finance blockchain. And in this, they converted paper-based invoices into electronic invoices and the results we just covered in the previous tweet, but they successfully tokenized real world assets. But another interesting point out of this is the involvement with TradeFinex, which if you go back here, you can see that TradeFinex is not only involved with the XDC network, but they're also involved with SBI, who is involved with Ripple and XRP. And I always like to make the point that the R3 Corda settler was originally tested with XRP and not XDC, and there is publicly available code out there to enable Corda to use XRP. And over the last couple of months, the XDC network, R3 Corda, TradeFinex, and SBI, and I think Impel, all joined up in a joint venture in Saudi Arabia to even further connect XDC and XRP. And in my opinion, I don't see why these very large financial institutions and governmental financial institutions wouldn't want to be able to use XRP because they are already so connected to XRP because of their involvement with Ripple in cross-border payments and CBDCs. And to tie Impel in here, they are a company that provides ISO 222 compliant financial transaction messaging, which is not only associated with TradeFinex, R3, and XDC, but they are also involved in that J JV with SBI. So it's just another way that these companies 
who have had a history of competition and even animosity at times are very likely working together, if not d- d- directly, then indirectly in parallel or tangential ways. Now, as far as XDC price goes, uh, the price has not been all that exciting. It peaked in 2021 at about 18 cents, and we got all the way down to about 2.2 cents. I think I got most of mine at about three and a half cents somewhere in here. But if we go on the one week chart, we can see that it has been in this downtrend for quite some time and it did have a very long period of accumulation. It did pop up along with XRP when XRP was deemed to be not a security and it got all of the way up to about 10 cents. I think it did wick to about 12, but it didn't hold that for a long time. And ever since then, we're all the way back down to just about four cents right now. And it does look like it's continuing downwards a little bit on our one week chart. On the one day chart, it's a lot of the same kind of thing, but we are beginning to turn back up a little bit. And our MACD is beginning to turn back up as well. So this could be turning around because of everything happening in crypto and the global economy right now. But it could also be an indication that the regulatory clarity with the UN MLETR and the ETDA are beginning to work for XDC. Now, I don't know how high this thing will actually go in this upcoming run. If you just, if you only look at some pretty easy things, if we do extend all of the way up to our 4.236 fib, that gets up to about 71 cents. I have seen people who have been predicting an XDC of about $1.30. So I have no idea and I don't try to, but I do think XDC could have a lot of potential in this bull run happening now. 